Hey guys, welcome back to another coaching video. This is the second part to a diamond coaching session I did recently and a lot of it is about boost management and really effective shadowing. So I hope you enjoy and if you do or want to consider coaching yourself, make sure you join the Discord down below. That is SSL Academy, it's in the description. Enjoy the video guys, I'll see you later. Okay, so if you're low on boost on defense, uh, this is a bit situational again. A little bit more of a niche thing, but um, when you're low on boost on defense, you always want to try and prioritize um, picking up pads when you can. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of a good way to demonstrate this because you've not done the uh, you've not done the big problem that I see a lot of people doing. So let's say I'm just gonna talk about low boost defense a little bit. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So if we're defending on low boost in general, mm. what we don't want to do is we don't want to boom the ball away, right? Because it just lets the enemy continue their aggression. Even though yeah. it gives us kind of like a false illusion of getting a bit of space, it always results in us getting pushed back into our into our net and then them continuing their assault. Okay. So in low boost, our main priority is to get boost whilst defending. And it might sound yep. silly that I'm prioritizing boost over defending, but you kind of want to incorporate that as a priority into your defense. Yeah. So yeah. I'll use the example of like a backboard, for instance. So if we're on the backboard and we have zero boost, and let's say our teammate is here, like the way we're going to prioritize boost over our defense is, let's say the ball's coming in to the backboard and it's going to land here. Let's say we're on the backboard and we're about to catch the ball with zero mm. boost. What I want to do is I want to backflip this down to the corner and this is going to allow my teammate to get boost. So we, we want to prioritize like one person getting boost in defense if they can. And mm. then this is going to also buy space for someone else to pick up pads, right? So right. pads are very important and uh, always recognize when you're low boost in defense and always like this has been kind of like a, a trigger to start thinking about your boost, okay? If you're low boost in defense. Yeah. So, if you're getting a chance or an opportunity to, tra to transition into offense here, don't think too much about the enemy or your next play. Think about boost lines and how you can start getting some boost. Mm. Because in this scenario, if you continue to make a play here with no boost, it's probably going to result in you getting possession taken away from you. And then you're not going to yeah. be able to rotate back fast uh, as well. So I think right now I'm I thinking... Thought... Uh, yeah, sorry, anyway. I think what I thought in this situation is this person would jump towards the ball. So I was thinking mm -hmm. probably get like a light touch on it and then do a single jump 50. Yeah, and then maybe you can get a goal from it, right? Be but they, they, they didn't um, challenge me, which I didn't expect. <laughs> yeah, so a smarter player realizes you don't have boost. And maybe he didn't realize, you know, maybe he just goes for the shadowing because he feels more comfortable doing that. But yeah. uh, a better player is going to realize that you guys are starved. You know, they're going to keep track a little bit of your boost and who's picking up 100 boosts, who's picking up pads and they're going to shadow you and they're going to realize that you've not got too much offensive options against them. So it's quite easy for them to shadow and take the ball off you and then attack again. Yeah. So again, I always like to prioritize boost in these situations because I can normally pick up some pads, like forget about making an offensive play. I'm going to pick up this pad, I'm going to pick up this pad, maybe I'm going to pick up this pad, and this pad and then I'm going to go for this pad and then I'm going to go for the ball, right? And I'm going to yeah, take like a okay. 50 with no boost. And then after that, suddenly I've got 40 boost and we're defending again. And it's like slowly starting to get a little bit better, you know. And maybe we've got another opportunity to make a good defensive play into offense. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people will say, you know, screw boost. But I'm going to be honest with you, boost is important. And in defense, it's a big priority sometimes. Only when you're low boost. Other than that, it should always be ball over boost. As you can see here, like we're having to make a play with zero boost and it's very difficult for us with the enemy shadows. Okay. Yeah, pretty unlucky there. Respect to his teammate, that's good. Okay, okay. Very careful here. So the enemy misses it, even still. So this is actually going to happen a lot, right? So, what rank is this? You said it's Diamond 3? Diamond 3. Again, yeah, I, so I'm di playing very aggressive this match. Way more aggressive than I usually do, I think. No, that's fine. I mean, it's good to play aggressive. Like, uh, I encourage you to play aggressive. Uh, I think playing aggressive is the 
only way to play Rocket League, if I'm honest with you. Like, you cannot play passive, especially not in this kind of new era of Rocket League. Like, uh, every good player is aggressive. Uh, yeah. They're just aggressive in a smart way. Yeah. Um, so here, here we have um, kind of a similar scenario to the ones we've had before. So we're second man. And uh, something I want to bring your attention to here is in Diamond 3 and all the way up to around GC1, you're going to get a lot of easy balls being like completely blundered, like just given away for free. Like the enemy yeah. here, he misses the ball, right? So imagine in this scenario, we don't commit again, just like before, but we pressure the opponent and make him think that we're going to challenge him. So this guy can't see you, right? It's his corner vision. He can't see you. Yeah. So imagine we push up like you did, and I'm sure he gets audio cues here, right? Yeah, so he can hear you jumping and he can hear you to the left driving up. So imagine the scenario we actually don't commit, like I've been uh, saying this game. We drive up, we turn around, we do a very quick turn. This guy misses the ball, we should have a free goal. Yeah, okay. Simple. And this is going to happen all the way up to GC1. Like, people are just going to miss saves, they're going to miss balls, they're going to screw up a lot. And if you're that player that's playing aggressive, smart and slow and calculated and kind of letting your opponent screw up their own initiative when they have the ball mm -hmm. you're gonna get a crazy amount of free goals i can't stress that enough i mean you could get like four goals a game from this i'm not gonna lie yeah okay and that's almost winning every game like straight out from these plays so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna run about this because it's the same thing as before right like yeah, yeah. i'm sure you understand it's just push up Give them cues that you're challenging. Don't actually challenge. Turn around. Let them screw up. Let them pass. Let them do whatever they want. And then take the ball for yourself. Yeah. Picking up some boosts on a lane. That's good. Nice wave dash recovery. Okay, I'd be a little okay over here. I think, uh, so see here. We see, so if we're watching our teammate, keep an eye on our teammate. Teammate's here. I think I heard your teammate flipping back. Um, not 100% sure, but I think I heard him flipping back. I'm assuming he's on the back right boost here. I'm assuming he's turned at this point and he's coming up on mid. Probably uh, between your corner boost and the mid boost. Yeah, he's probably closer to mid boost now. What we can do is we can actually just peace out here and we can leave the ball for him. Hmm. Um, okay. Like, this is good. And the reason this is good what you're doing is because, as you can see, if we look at Nitro Hazard on the enemy team, let's take a look at this guy's perspective. Oh, no, this, is, this is your teammate. So let's just see if your teammate's positioning was as I said it was. Yeah, so he's in a really good position here, right? So they just kind of swoop in. But I think, uh, let me just go back, let me check Nitro Hazard. So yeah, when you turn on this ball, perfect. That is really good. And why is, it, why is it really good? Because we see he respects it, and he turns. Right, you've claimed possession from that turn. Yeah. Super good. Um, and now we can think about the fact that we have zero boost, and there's not we can do with this ball. <laughs> like yeah, we can I'll just, do here, I'm, bit, yeah. here I just want to do like low 50s. Yeah, we, we can take like a... <clears throat> so what we can do here is we can take the ball, we can take a 50 in the corner. And then what I see happening, since it's diamond three, and your teammate's diamond three as well, is I see your teammate barreling into the corner and taking another 50, and then both of you are double command on the corner. So you're kind of like baiting your teammate in by doing this, I think. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so it's just a little bit dangerous in my opinion. I mean, it looks like you do get a goal from it in the coming like 10 seconds or so. But uh, just because of the information that I gathered before, and hopefully the information that you'll start gathering yourself, is... We're thinking that even when our t so we have like this cone of vision and we see our teammate, but even when he comes out of this cone of vision, like, you know, in my head when I was telling you where he was, like I can just tell where he is, right? I'm just thinking about it, keeping an eye on where he is in my head. Like he's back, I hear him flip back, he's on corner boost. He's probably turned, he's coming up. And then right here we can just turn and leave it for him. And he's going to have a really good attack, we can go pick up boost and become second man, and we can play off of the uh, play that he makes. Okay. Whoa, 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 <laughs> What's happening here? Hold on a second, I'm getting some flashbacks. 
What are we? I thought um, both of them committed like how kind of too much, so I thought I had an opportunity. Yeah, I get you. I get you. So something I like to I like to think in Rocket League is if the goal isn't open, I'm gonna wait until it's open. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of the time, a goal can look pretty promising, and it turns out to be the goal that ends the game against you. Yeah, I um, um, I used to play very much like that, but I thought I was missing out on a lot of um, opportunities to mm -hmm. uh, capitalize by being too far back. Yep. Uh, so I tried, you know, being more aggressive, but then I just found out that I was uh, getting scored on a lot more. <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's great, but this is where I want you to, so you're in the right mindset. But I want you to turn this offensive idea that you have into the offensive shadowing idea that I'm giving you, all right? Yeah, yeah. So as soon as you think about offensively committing, think instead about offensively shadowing. And what, what I'm going to say to you is, if you think this is like a, a decent opportunity to go for, I can guarantee you that if you don't go for this and you offensively shadow and force them to give you the ball again, Eventually, you're going to continue attacking and you're going to get a free goal. Like, it's going yeah, to happen, okay. right? You're going to get that open net in the next 30 seconds if you defensively shadow. Right, right. So it's all about, like, never never think about scoring. Think about breaking their defense. Like, completely. <laughs> like, most goals are scored in pro games. Obviously, it's threes, so it's a little bit different. But if you watch pro games, it's like, not a lot of goals get scored most of the time unless there's some serious issues on one side. Uh, or one team making a lot of mistakes but the goals that are scored in pro games are always when there has been a constant attacking pressure for the past like two minutes to the point where people are starving and can't get any boost and are playing off like the smallest amount of boost from pads until eventually they just break through and get it and get a free goal because someone yeah. just can't make a, a small defense play because they literally have nothing yeah um, and it's kind of the same in, in twos and even in ones, like even in ones, a lot of a lot of pros will prioritize stealing boost over taking a shot, especially uh, smart players like flakes and stuff. They'll always go for boost. They'll even just take the ball across pitch instead of like even being offensive, right? And they'll just take another boost because they're just mm -hmm. playing this kind of like long game of I'm going to starve you out and I'm going to make you come out of position and then I'm going to take this free goal. I find it's generally quite hard to be able to take their boost as much as I want to because mm -hmm. my teammates generally like go up and are really aggressive take the ball and whatnot so then I'm kind of left back and they're the ones who have to go up and get boost and then they don't I'm like ah yeah so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about stealing the boost I think that's more something that's going to come a bit more naturally from hacking and then rotating out from your attack yeah so like for instance when you when you attack a lot of the time you're going to rotate out on the corners and you're going to take a boost, right? Yeah. So don't worry, I think that's going to come a bit more naturally. Um, obviously when you attack from middle, you want to be taking these pads in front of their net. And that's going to really affect their boost management, because a lot of the time that's yeah, what okay. people go for when they're starving. Um, but yeah. Always, always think about how you can drag the opponent out of position by again using offensive shadowing. Let's take a look at their boost. 49, 89, they've got quite a lot of boost, um, which isn't great for us, but we can drag that out, right? So yeah, so they get a touch here, um, so let's see we were here, and we slowed down, he gets to pass here, we're just going to turn, we're going to come back, we're going to take the ball, and then this boost was stolen on the way up, right, in uh, offense, so suddenly when we rotate here, and we take the boost, we have possession, we have the boost, and then we start attacking, and then suddenly this guy was for this boost. And he's like, whoa, it's not there. <laughs> and then he feels yeah. like he has to pressure you anyway, right? Because he's there. And, uh, you know, he's used another... He's on 38 boost. He might pick up a pad or two, but he's going to use a lot of boost to try and, like, pressure you and then start shadowing you. And then suddenly this guy's all the way out here. We get it past him. And then it's just this guy in defense. And he's gone for this yeah, boost. Okay. And then he's rotating back. <laughs> you know, like, it's kind of like this 
it's like a tug of war almost, you know? And you want to keep pulling them and pulling them and pulling them out of their... Uh, out of their safety and out of their... You want to kind of rope their boost out as well. Yeah, okay. So try and think of the long game and less of the short term... I could bang this in and the game's over kind of reward, you know? Mm. Like the goals will naturally come if you're playing right. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, consider liking, subscribing, or commenting down below, and just a reminder, join the Discord. Peace out, and I'll see you in the next one.